Rhabdomyolysis. What does that mean? Rhabdo refers to the rod or cylindrical shape of skeletal muscle. Myo means muscle. Lysis means destruction of the muscle. What is rhabdo? It's a pathological breakdown of that skeletal muscle. It can be due to intense physical exertion over days or one very hard workout. CrossFit warned us about rhabdo back in 2005, stating it can disable, maim, and even kill. What are the causes of what we call exertional rhabdomyolysis? Medications. What medications is your athlete on? What medical conditions do they have? Things like sickle cell trait, autoimmune disease, pre-existing kidney disease, any history of heat stroke. What about being in a deconditioned state? being dehydrated? What about dietary supplements that contain a lot of caffeine, a lot of those pre-workout supplements? What about increased temperature and humidity? It is Texas after all. What about altitude? What about the leadership culture? Is it based on an excessive emphasis on winning at all costs and a misconception that more or harder training will lead to better performance? And might that lead to excessive risk tolerance or simply poor awareness of risks? What are the signs and symptoms? Muscle pain in 23 to 80% of those who get it. Muscle weakness. Red or dark urine, an important sign, but it is only in 10% or less of those who have it as a single symptom. What about swelling? Local swelling means swelling in a particular area like triceps after push-ups. And fever, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and just feeling sick. It can certainly be an emergency. It can cause kidney failure. It can cause compartment syndrome, which is swelling and pain in a muscle, which can be life-threatening. It can cause blood clots to form throughout the body and block small blood vessels. And it can cause an irregular and or fast heartbeat. How common is it? Well, let's take a look. 2006, University of North Carolina. 2007, University of South Carolina. 2010, Oregon High School. 2011, a Maryland High School. 2011, University of Iowa. 2013, Ohio State. 2014, Ohio State. 2014, University of Oakland. 2015, Butler. 2015, another high school cheer program. 2016, TWU. 2017, University of Oregon. 2018, Nebraska, can occur in the world of MMA. 2018, University of Houston. 2023, Concordia University. And right here at Rockwell Heath High School. And for those of you who do not believe push-ups can cause rhabdomyolysis, 11 papers, read it again, 11 papers, showing exertional rhabdomyolysis caused by push-ups. What about safety training that coaches in the UIL are supposed to take? Well, guess what? It does not include rhabdomyolysis. Please look this up for yourself. The links are all in the description box. What do you do if you suspect rhabdo, if you have the pain, weakness, smelling, swelling, dark urine, if there's a history of those medications that may cause it, supplements that may cause it. Well, you need proper blood work. You need to go to the doctor. You need what's called a comprehensive metabolic panel, and there's a particular test called creatine kinase. The doctor will explain this, but it's a marker of muscle damage. It's a very important test. What about emergency care and inpatient care? Well, this is going to be determined by the history of the symptoms and blood tests. The current treatment recommendations are intravenous fluids not just for dehydration, but it's to protect the kidneys. You have to monitor for complications, meaning redo the blood work to make sure the levels are not still going up, review the symptoms, and make sure there's no compartment syndrome. This is a picture of surgery after compartment syndrome because the muscle swells so much, they have to do emergency surgery to release the pressure. What about return to play? Well, unfortunately, think three months, that's right, three months, phase one, three days to two weeks, you're just going to get back to your regular activities of daily living without exercise. You're going to monitor the daily symptoms. You need to drink, possibly increase salt intake, 
You want to, again, avoid resistance training. Make sure you get great sleep. Phase two, once everything seems like it's improving, meaning decreased symptoms and the blood work is improving, you can begin easy activity like walk or gentle stretching, very lightweight resistance training, body weight or 20 25% of one rep max. And that should be supervised by somebody that actually knows what they're doing, like an athletic trainer. And parents, you need to be involved in this. You need to follow up with the provider so you're constantly checking the blood work. If there's no increase in those clinical symptoms, you're going to move on. You're going to gradually increase kind of common sense, which as we all know is not common, but you're going to go up gradually, making sure that each time you go up, do the symptoms increase and does the blood work get worse? As long as things are improving, you can gradually return and over a two and a half to three month period, hopefully you're back to full participation. And finally, what about injury risk mitigation? Well, I encourage y'all to read the two reports that are available, the report on the incident in the Oregon High School and the report on the incident at TWU. What did they say? This is really important. Recognize that intense, short-term, repetitive resistance exercise involving a single muscle compartment can lead to serious health complications, particularly during exercise conditions with a higher risk of heat stress and inadequate hydration. Routinely assess potential health and safety hazards to student athletes and implement appropriate countermeasures as warranted such as activity modification, rest breaks, and hydration. Train the coaches in both rhabdo and proper strength and conditioning. Provide oversight by somebody who's dual trained, by somebody who's a medical professional and is a strength and conditioning specialist. Review the athlete medical history for things like sickle cell trait, medications. What are parent instructions? Parents, you must be involved. Always, always, always allow water. That's just an always. It's 2023. If a coach doesn't allow water, I would suggest that that coach be fired. Yes, I said it. Make athletes feel comfortable reporting their injury or illness. No, we don't want a bunch of mamby pambies, but we don't want athletes covering up an injury or illness that could hurt them in the long term. And this is a huge one. No punishment drills. These do not build toughness. There are so many ways to build toughness. Go watch anything on Phil Jackson when he was the coach of the Bulls. Watch Phil Jackson. No punishment drills. No beat your chest first day back from a break killer workouts. Bad way to go. No exercise to failure or as many reps as you can with one exercise over and over and over. That doesn't exist in the strength training world as a way to improve athlete performance. And finally, require communication between coaches, strength and conditioning specialists, athletic trainers, administer, ad administrators, athletes, and parents. Please protect your athletes.